important when we are officiating a marriage. Because 90% of your problems in marriage are actually connected to the way you use your tongue. 90% of the problems in marriage are connected to the way you use your tongue. So be careful. If you do not use your tongue correctly, perhaps it will result in your marriage breaking. It can. Many people don't use their tongues in the proper manner. Hence, they break relationships. So think of your bad habit and eradicate it. Promise yourself here and now, this is my bad habit. I'm definitely going to do away with this. I'm definitely going to help myself. And each one of us has different habits that are bad. Sometimes we are tested when we are upset, when things don't go the way we want them to go. We are tested. What do you do? Do you become angry? Do you start blaming others? Do you start shouting and screaming? If that's the case, you need help. You need a lot of help. You need a lot of help. So my brothers and sisters, let's try and understand. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with the message of Islam. I want to spend a few moments telling you about the rights of the non-Muslims. The rights that you owe those who are not Muslim. The reason I want to say this is many people have become very indifferent or sometimes you find other people who become violent in the name of Islam. The problem is not just with the way we treat non-Muslims, but even within ourselves, those whom we differ with. Do we need to beat them up? No. We need to talk to them. We need to, we have the right to discuss. We have the right to express and explain. We have the right to say things. They have the right too to explain to us why they believe what they believe, why they are saying what they are saying. They have the right, they are human beings. You cannot say you don't have the right to talk. I do. If someone has a confusion, how are you going to clarify that confusion if they don't speak? So it's your duty to let them speak so that you can clarify and don't become aggressive. Educate. Many people are ready to follow what they are convinced is the truth. But we are not ready to convince them. We don't have the patience to talk to them. We become impatient. And when we're impatient, we become hostile because we are impatient. But if you have the patience, you try once, you try twice, you try three times, you try four times, and then you realize guidance is in the hands of Allah. Take a look at Abu Talib. Who was he? Abu Talib was the uncle of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He didn't accept Islam, but he was sympathetic towards the cause. He was sympathetic to the degree that he did not allow people to harm his nephew. He didn't. And he knew what was right. So the Prophet ﷺ tried with him once, tried with him twice, tried with him countless times, but did not become angry or upset. Never. The Prophet ﷺ on the deathbed of Abu Talib says, Ya Ammi, Qul kalimatan uhajju laka biha yawm al -qiyama. Look at the beautiful words. Oh my uncle. Now this was the last try. Oh my uncle. Say this statement, this declaration. Say this word. And I will fight your case on the day of judgment. But the uncle did not say the word. What happened? The Prophet ﷺ, did he become angry? No, he became sad. He was saddened because he felt he was the messenger. He had to deliver the message. And here is someone so close to him, not accepting the message. Did he become violent? No. Did he start beating people around there? No. Did he swear anyone? No. He was so sad that he called out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a result of which the verses were revealed, comforting him. Don't be sad. Guidance is in our hands. <laughs> You do not guide whomsoever you wish, but Allah is the one who guides whomsoever He wishes. It's Allah who's the guide, not you. So Allah told Muhammad 
We are the ones who give the guidance. In another place of the Quran, Allah says, Your duty is to convey the message. Our duty is to take account. To take account of what they've done. The message came to you. What did you do? You just deliver the message. How they respond to the message is between them and us. The same applies to anyone speaking good, anything good. Today, I'm speaking to you. I will be asked, you spoke to them. What about your own life? You spoke to them. Do you practice what you preach? That's what I will be asked. And you will be asked, you heard the message. Did you practice upon the good that you heard? Did you practice upon the good that you heard? If the answer is yes, my life changed. I changed my life. I did good. I came closer to you, O oh Allah. I became a better person. I became more bothered about how I speak so that I can fulfill my role in a better way. When you're a manager or when you're a CEO of a, of a big company, you know that the way you speak to people means a lot. You know that those who are under you perhaps and you are in authority over them, they are motivated by good words. They are not motivated by you screaming, yelling, swearing, insulting, not at all. I know as a person who preaches and who tries to motivate that when you want to speak to the new generation, you have to be one of them. You cannot stand and preach in a way that they feel this is a person from out of space living somewhere where they don't even understand what we're going through and instructing us to give up our lives. May Allah forgive us. But when you understand them, when you relate, when you respect people, when a person sins, the idea is not to insult them, but it is to help them so that they stop sinning. A lot of us, someone sins, we go around the whole city informing the whole globe that this person committed adultery. Sometimes it's not even the case. Gossip, we love it. We enjoy it. Gossip will destroy communities, societies. Why don't you say good things behind their backs? Why don't you say good things behind their backs? That is how you will build society. I remember speaking in a community where they were complaining about their mothers-in-law. Now, I hope that that is not a problem here. But you know, anywhere you go in the world, sometimes you will have a few issues here and there. People complaining about their mothers-in-law. And I said, one of the solutions is to say good things behind her back about her in a way that she gets the news from someone else that your daughter-in-law only says good things about you. What will happen? Even if she says bad things, she will be ashamed. And vice versa. Vice versa means my beloved mothers-in-law, when you speak about your daughters-in-law, only say good things. Wow. Only say good things and you see what will happen. Say, mashallah, she's a very, very good wife to my son. She is. My son loves her a lot. Alhamdulillah. She greets me. She comes here once a year for 15 minutes and that is a lot. Mashallah. Subhanallah. Notice what I'm saying. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. May He open our doors. The difficulties we face, my brothers and sisters, a lot of the times connected to the fact that our salah is not in order. One of our primary duties is to fulfill our prayers to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's given us our lives. What do we do? We didn't fulfill the salah. We felt lazy when we did it. We lived a life where when people watched us, our children or family members, they saw that whatever the Almighty had ordained was actually considered a burden upon us.